Qualcomm Flip Clock fans to a Flip Clock TV, it's a Panasonic AN409T. I wanted to get my hands on one of these for a while. I've seen seen them on eBay on and off. So there's your flip clocks in pretty dirty shape there, and it's non-working according to the seller. Now this uh, flip clock TV came out in 1970, and it was priced at $99.95, which is just over $681 in today's dollars. But we're looking at this package here, and it's kind of surprising me because it's a lot smaller than I thought it was. Of course, on the advertisement, now I see that it said uh, it's a nine inch view, nine inch diagonal. Um, so here I've taken it out of the first box and it's in a second box, which is much appreciated. So the seller here obviously knows how to package, but it's getting smaller and smaller yet. So, which is kind of good because I didn't really want a honking TV. I really didn't want a TV in the first place at all, but it's even smaller now. But I had a member of Flip Clock fans really thought I should take a look at this, and I wanted to see one. So I got a hold of an eBay seller who um, was willing to work with me on the price. We'll talk about that seller a little bit more later. We're getting this apart here. But I wanted to get see, first of all, what kind of clock was inside there. A lot of us are interested in what it looks like in there. And then if I can get it fixed. Hopefully it's something simple, and we'll see. But there you go. Now that's about as good as anybody usually does when they send me a flip clock. But look at this. This thing's wrapped up just excellent wrapping here so while i'm still trying to work to get this out of here i want to introduce you to our uh, seller from ebay who helped us out Well, I'm glad you made it back, and I finally got it unwrapped here. So you see, this thing's a lot smaller than than I really anticipated. And you should see the, the garbage that I'm throwing back behind me here. I've got enough to make a bonfire. But you look at the size here, it will compare it to a clock that a lot of us are familiar with. This is the Copal 227. And you see the, the clock mechanism itself seems to be about the same size as a, just a standard clock mechanism. So we'll get in there, and we'll find out exactly what's going on. But the whole TV itself is definitely small. It's portable. Everything seems to be in functional shape here. Now, we have powered this on in the past. And, um, well, it's old. It's old school. It's kind of scary, too. It's got stuff in here that wants to wants to try to kill you. It's pretty dirty. It does power on, of course. Uh, it doesn't have, it can't read any of the digital signals. So we don't know if it would even work as a TV. I don't think I'm even going to go there. But right here... We've got the flip clock portion, and you can see we're talking about some tight squeeze here, and it's pretty clear that everything's going to have to come off for me to get to that. There's no access from the front, so the picture tube, the frame here, you can see some screws that I'm going to have to undo. I'm going to take these support brackets off and hopefully get this off and, and not damage myself or the clock. Let's see what happens. Never been shocked yet by a flip clock. But we did it. We survived. Didn't tear anything up. And we've got the clock out here. And it's kind of interesting. It's got two, two neon glow bulbs there. And that's pretty, sh yeah, it's almost for certain. A Copal 2 motor, which is spinning incredibly well, which is kind of concerning because I thought it was just going to be a gunked up motor. So it says model... GC1286, I think it said. And we've got an Omron switch there that's going to turn the TV on and off if you use the timer function. That there is for the motor. So we'll probably have to disconnect all that stuff so I can get to the clock. And here it is. I got to the clock. And look at this. And the it's a GC1238. I'm sorry. But this this looks like uh, a mechanism that I've seen inside of some of the clock signs from early in the day, early 1970s. 
This is part of the mechanism that's going to help uh, turn the TV on and off. So it's, it's, a, it's a basic early copal mechanism and it's flipping just fine. It's flipping great. Again, all that and the motor, the wheels turn in smoothly, which concerns me because that's pointing towards something a little more difficult to fix than I wanted to deal with. We'll go into that here in just a moment. So we got we're looking here to see if the, if it's going to work and again I'm not I'm not real enthused about it so if this comes on when I power on it really points towards there being a deeper problem which is going to probably be inside that that gearbox there Okay it comes on immediately which is great because we know electronically the motor is working fantastic but something's wrong and it's going to be in the gearbox. So that's always difficult. It's always a challenge. We're going to need parts and who knows where we will get them. So here we go. I've got the, the end piece undone. You got to take a little screw out. Then you got to take a, like a knife or a blade and kind of scrape the, or cut the uh, adhesive there to get that top off. And what you're going to see here is the gear that's touching the metal gear from the motor so it's a brass on plastic situation there are no teeth left it is completely chewed up so that, that's our problem and you look at that and you say okay what are we going to do well we have to tear into the whole gear situation and find a replacement gear or find a replacement motor or gearbox so one of those things has to happen and it has to be, it has, it's going to have to fit inside the, the confines, it's going to have to match up, and it's going to have to be a 110 to 120 volt motor. So here we go, I've located something that's going to work. This is the gearbox I just pulled off of a Copal 225, and it happens to be one that you can switch between 50 and 60 hertz. Which is curious. We don't we don't need that right now, but it's kind of curious that we've we've got one like that. So we're gonna and you can see here on this one, it has a space for that switch, but it's not utilizing a switch at this point. So it's exactly the same case. So we're looking at a situation where it's exactly the same case. Everything seems to be lining up. Of course, that motor's working great, really good actually. So we're gonna detail how we're gonna. Get everything apart and now i've already done this to the 225 but i wanted to show you first of all this knife here this is a this has got a removable blade uh, really sharp so this way i don't have to worry about tearing my knife blades up oh no, i didn't cut myself don't want to do that on camera anyway so there's a couple ways you can do this you can use a drill bit and you can drill that out but what i'd like to do is to either you can either sand it down grind it down you got to watch that wire there. I don't if I slip I'm gonna cut that wire and that's gonna be bad news. You gotta you can drill it out, you can scrape it down. I'm gonna scrape it and it's scraping just fine with this blade. If I get that down to the level of the plate, then I should be able to pop those out. So it's not really a rivet. It's like a post that they've taken and pressed a um, kind of a shape into which is acting like a rivet. So you scrape that off and you'll be able to pump that out. Now, the idea being that I'm going to be able to snap it back in and it'll have enough snap to hold. We'll look at that. So I'll smooth these down. Now, the thing you have to watch out for is that motor, that rotor there, if you put too much pressure on that, you're going to bend it and mess it up. So the other thing that we're looking at here, and some of you may have noticed, see the gears there that come out? They're different, different number of teeth. We're not going to, we're not going to be able to use this gear here. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that right out. Now you can't do that when, in the, when it's still inside the gearbox because that the gear will slip. You'll never get it back in. So I'm going to I'm going to take the the teeth on the right, the post and, and gear on the right, and replace it into my new gearbox. And that should work. Of course, I still got to get this gearbox off first. Now after you scrape that out, you've got to get a blade or something underneath here and pry it out gently. Now here's where things go wrong. You're either going to hit that rotor and bend it and mess it up, or you're going to bend your frame or you're going to bend the plate 
all of those things are going to cause the, the motor not to work correctly. So you can't be in a hurry. And I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to be able to do this on camera because I'm trying to show you what I'm doing without cutting myself. And right there, I'm kind of pushing to see if I can pop that out. And you, can, you can see what could happen there. I'm going to pop a hole in my hand there. Anyway, you can, I'm going to try to pry that out, pop it out uh, gently and, and slowly. Uh, but I'll do that off camera. It's just, it's just too difficult. So here, here I'll go ahead and get this out. This is the gear um, that I'm going to have to need. And I'll, I'll go ahead and, and I'm going to have to use the gear that came with the old clock because you can see there's a flat piece on that arbor that's going to have to mate up and match with, with this gear. And on the other clock, it had two flat sides, so I couldn't use that other gear if I wanted to. I have to use this that came from the original. So again, I've got to take that off off camera. So I've done that. I've taken it off. I've put the, the new one on. And it snapped right in, and everything went great, except for the top one here is a little loose. So I can use some cement up there, something that's going to kind of, or enamel paint or something, and I'll grab it and hold it. i actually going to use super glue with a little bit of baking soda to make it harden real fast. Now, super glue anywhere around these gears is could, potentially a catastrophe, so that's dangerous. So we'll go ahead and just a matter of getting this back in there, and we'll know pretty quick if, if I've done a good thing or not. So this is the old one versus the new one. Well, you know what I'm saying. It's the, the original versus the one that came with the clock. And we're going to hopefully get that in there. It looks everything. Everything looks exactly the same shape and size. So once I've made sure I line that up, again, those are those are plastic or they call them nylon gears. And if you put too much pressure on those, you're going to deform them or break them. So we've got the case. We'll get that back on. It's a matter of just getting it on without uh, causing any trouble, screwing a screw in, making sure that's set to 60. And then I'll put some sealant around the outside edge there. But I, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and just put it in the place on the clock uh, to make sure everything's actually going to work before I seal and screw everything down. Or either I've, Hopefully everything will work or I've wasted a lot of time and a lot of your time so you know it works, right? So it does, of course. I get everything sealed, everything's back together, and it's working like a champ. It's working great. So we got that taken care of. The other thing was that the lights, one of them was working, one of them was not, and the one that's over the tin there was not working. And it, it looked like the um, the resistor that's underneath that, um, that brownish stuff that's impregnated fiberglass, uh, the resistor burned out on it probably fairly early because... The bulb there over the 10 is actually clearer than the one over the 5, so I think probably from the factory it wasn't working good, but it's working good now. Now again, I haven't addressed the TV at all. I want someone else to look into that. So this is before, pretty cloudy, dirty, and non-functional. And this is after. Working great. It's the Panasonic AN409T. We'll finally get a good look at it. Hopefully someone can fix the TV portion. Thanks for taking the time.